There's new DNA information on the Paracas elongated skulls. That's a, a, a group of skulls, 300 of them, that were excavated in Peru in 1928. Now, you can see from the pictures that they're abnormal looking. There's a, the, 300 of these skulls that were found buried together, and they all have these abnormal heads. And So the, my, my first reaction when I saw this was, Oh, but there are some cultures where this is considered beautiful and right. cultures actually elongate their skulls. Yes. But tell us a little bit about why that is not the explanation for this. Well, this is what they're finding. First of all, in, in regards to that, the, the capacity uh, the, inside the skull is larger than a normal human skull. So if they were to do that, what you're mm -hmm. talking about, it would reshape the skull, but it wouldn't change the volume of the brain inside the skull. These are 25% larger and 60% heavier. That much. Ooh, 60%. Yeah. That's a huge difference. And, and that, that alone is enough to make you go, mm -hmm. well, what's, what's well, going mm -hmm. on there? But the DNA evidence that came out, uh, to put this in perspective, these skulls are 3,000 years old and the, the pyramids of Egypt are around 4,000 years old. And uh, what they came out with was this, the researcher who is, uh, who is uh, named Brian Forster, he hired a DNA uh, geneticist to look into this who said this, it had mitochondrial DNA with mutations unknown in any human primate or animal known so far. But a few fragments I was able to sequence from this sample indicate that if, this, if these mutations will hold, we are dealing with a new human-like creature, very distant from the Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. I am not sure it will even fit into the known evolutionary tree. <laughs> uh, so this is incomplete. It's not an entire, he's saying the, the it's not samples an entire that DNA he's sequence. gotten, yeah. there's this indication that yes, these are, there's uh, some human-like DNA that they cannot connect to previously known DNA. And, and of course, a lot of people, skeptics, are going to, you know, criticize the actual test or the methods of the test or the, you know, which um, which they should, you know. Sure. Yes. But you know, even 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 the the part about the volume of the uh, the volume of the brain and the weight of it is enough to make to make me lean in the direction of yeah. like, okay, there might be something now, even, there. Even even visually, I mean, these things look photoshopped. They're so unlike any human skulls. Like they, I, I, that does. I mean, so incredibly long. Yeah. And there's the 300 of them, the entire population that of this hair? area. Yeah, this isn't compared Whoa. with a normal human skull. And as you said, the, the, you know, the um, skull modification that certain uh, cultures do, um, some suggest that it is to emulate these older, mm -hmm. this older civilization mm -hmm. because they were uh, superior in a way. So the elite would try to make themselves look that way. That's what's being mm. supposed. I'm not saying I believe that, so don't go flaming me down in the comments, <laughs> all right? Uh, Forster says this, from the doctors that I have spoken to, they have said that you can alter the shape of the skull, but you cannot increase the size of the skull. The skull is genetically predetermined to have a certain volume. And um, he's saying, you know, he needs more money to do a full, a full genetic uh, genome study, which would cost about $100,000. So he's trying to raise the money to do that, look for an angel investor. Until then, he says, um, I've had many different ideas, but I've been waiting for actual DNA analysis, and this has taken an incredible long time, mainly due to lack of funding. But he says he's, his intent is simply to find the truth as to who these people were. I find it fascinating. Absolutely. I, I want to know. So. Um, I hope, we, I hope we find out more.